Hey everybody, today Chris and I, we are downtown Indianapolis. You might be able to see a little bit of the skyline behind us. And if you're thinking about moving to Indianapolis, we're gonna talk about five things that you wanna make sure you're able to handle. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton. This is Chris Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about living in Indianapolis or any of the surrounding metro, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. Now we have people reaching out to us from all over the country with questions about Indianapolis, of course, downtown Indianapolis, and all the cities and towns that surround Indianapolis. So if you have any questions at all, then make sure that you reach out to us any ways you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions, and we'll certainly have your back whenever it comes time for you to make your move to the Indy Metro. All right, guys, again, in this video, we're gonna talk about five things that if you're thinking about moving to Indianapolis or anywhere surrounding Indianapolis, you wanna make sure that you can handle these things. Number one is the winter. Winters in the Midwest and Indianapolis can get rather long. Sometimes they'll last five months from November, late October, all the way through April. We've had snow in April. Some people love the winter, some people struggle with it. The holidays here are awesome, very high spirited, but post the holidays come the new year, it can get long for some people, so you need to be prepared for that. Days right. are short, not as much sunshine as there is in the spring, the summer, in the fall. Shorter days, not as much sunlight, can be a little gloomy feeling at times, depending on who you are, but just be prepared for the potential of a, of a long winter. Absolutely, and the winters here, we get less snow than what people think. We do. Average. We get a little over 20 inches a year, and it's usually spread out. And like Chris said, we can get some snow in April. It's happened before. It usually doesn't stick around at all, and by that time, spring is really fighting that off. But December, January, February, we can absolutely get some snow, and that's where we get the bulk of that 20 or so inches a year. It doesn't typically stick around very long, but we do get it. But the winter outside of the snow is usually, it's obviously cold being a Midwest winter, but it's wet. It does feel like it's wet a good majority of the time. This video actually is being filmed in December and it's a pretty nice day actually today and it's quite dry. So this would not be a very typical winter day. It would usually be a little bit colder than this, certainly, probably in the 30s, lots of days in the 20s, just mixed in with a little bit of snow. So the winters in the Midwest are pretty harsh for the most part. Up north, it's much more harsh than what we have here in Indianapolis though, although it's still going to be a pretty close to that typical Midwest winter. You need to be able to handle that. All right, number two, if you're thinking about moving to Indianapolis, and this might not apply to everybody out there, you may not really care that much, but it does apply to some, and they really do care about it, is the shopping. So Indianapolis is not a huge fashion hub, shopping hub in the country. It's not gonna be anywhere close to a Miami, or Naples, Florida, or New York, Los Angeles, any place like that. We've got some places where you have a, a centralized shopping center. They would usually just be malls for the most part. There's a mall in Greenwood, there's a mall on the north side in Castle. The highest end mall that Indianapolis actually has would be up at Keystone, the fashion mall there, where you can have some higher end stores. There's the shops at Perry Crossing out in Plainfield, and you have Circle Center Mall downtown as well. And there are several others around too, and you've got little places, little, I'd say areas where it's concentrated quite a bit. In fact, where we're downtown here, mentioned Circle Center Mall, but you can go just to the east of us to Mass Ave. And there are all kinds of little shops there. There are a lot of little shops and special boutique types of places, places like Broad Ripple. So you can find those from here to there, but you're not gonna find that super high-end, extremely exciting type of shopping. And as I said, that's, for some people, it doesn't matter all that much. A person like me, you, doesn't matter all that much to us but it does for a lot of people. So it's certainly something that if you visit Indianapolis, you scope that out if it is important to you because you're not gonna find a tremendous amount of it. Number three, so if you're moving to Indianapolis, you might not really think about what Indianapolis is really known for. And you have a lot of big cities across the country or across the world that are known for something. They're either known for arts or they're known for tourism, they're known for their beaches, they're known for their mountains or things like that. But Indianapolis, you kind of have to question, what is it known for? You know, if you were to mention Indianapolis across the country, the people who don't live here or across the world, they may not know a lot about it. But the one thing that they probably do know 
is that sports are a pretty big deal in Indianapolis. So we do have a number of professional teams like the Colts, the Pacers, the Fever, of course. There's a AAA baseball team here. There's a hockey team here. There's a soccer team here. There's the NCAA, NCAA yeah, NCAA headquarters here. So we get a lot of NCAA tournaments, whether that's football, basketball, and it's absolutely known for sports. You've got biggest sporting event in the entire world in Indy 500 in Indianapolis as well. So yeah, the Super Bowl's been here, of course. There's a lot of sports going on. So right with the NCAA, NCAA definitely yeah. yeah it's it's on the rotation for that so there's a lot of people coming here for sports tourism and of course if you live here you have plenty of sports to keep you busy but if you don't care about sports if you're not into them at all you need to know of course that Indianapolis is going to have a pretty heavy sports culture sports will be talked about a lot sports is around quite a bit you can avoid it for sure but it's a place that is ingrained in the culture here and it's pretty hard to avoid it completely but if you love sports then Indianapolis could certainly be a great place for you but there are other sports towns across the country too like New York and Miami and Los Angeles and and some other cities that I mentioned just in the shopping part but Indianapolis absolutely without a doubt when you get here you will feel that you will see that in a lot of different places and if it's yeah. something that drives you crazy then it may not be a great cultural fit for you. <laughs> Number four is that Indianapolis is a place that has a pretty heavy car culture. It's not super walkable as a whole. You can absolutely have some places that are pretty walkable and you could live in those places and walk to a lot of things like where we are right now here in downtown. You could live downtown, probably not have a car. I'd say it'd probably be a struggle sometimes. You would certainly Uber quite a bit or take a taxi quite a bit, but those would be about your only options outside of walking and your bike to get anywhere a decent distance outside of this particular area. The public transit in Indianapolis is not very good. Throughout the entire city, there's a bus system, but it's not gonna cover every single segment of the city that you'd probably wanna get into. And then when you get outside of Indianapolis into the suburbs, the cities that surround it, the public transit system is non-existent. There really isn't one at all. So if you're in any one of the suburbs surrounding Indianapolis, you are probably going to need to get a car. Absolutely, and if you get into some of the suburbs like Fishers, or Carmel, which have some pretty decent sized downtown areas, you could live in those areas and probably get by maybe without a car, but I think that would still probably be pretty agitating too, just because you're, you're gonna wanna leave those areas. They're not gigantic, and it's not gonna have every single thing that you could ever want or need in those areas either. So it would be a struggle. So the car culture here is pretty heavy. Most people have, and most families, have at least one car, probably two, maybe even more than that if they have more than two drivers in their family, just to make it easier to get around. So again, you can find some places that are walkable, as in you're going to dinner, or you're gonna go see a show, or you're going to a game. You could go park in one place, get out, go to dinner, go to that game, go to that show, hit all of those places without getting back in your car. There are plenty of places like that. Downtown Indianapolis, you could go to Broad Ripple, you could be in Carmel, you could be in Fishers, just to name a few, but there are others around that are walkable just in that perspective. But living here without a car, it's definitely not like New York City where you could definitely live there without a car. In fact, it's probably easier without a car just because it's so expensive to park it, the traffic is terrible. Right and it's maybe faster to, to take a taxi or an Uber to get from one place to another rather than get your car out. But here, it's, it's not going to be that way. It's absolutely gonna have a pretty heavy car culture. And the fifth thing you're gonna to wanna to be aware of and prepared for if moving to Indiana is daylight savings time, which most of the country already is on daylight savings time, so odds are you'll be used to this unless you're coming from Arizona or Hawaii. But the days here in Indianapolis in the summer are very, very long. If you have small kids with yeah. early bedtimes, you're gonna wanna get the room darkening curtains. Yeah, some blackout curtains. <laughs> yeah, so for June, sure. June, July, August, it's not dark until way after nine o'clock. Sometimes 9.45, yeah. I've even considered it still somewhat light out at, at 10 o'clock in July. And then the opposite for the winter. The days are extremely short. January, well actually November, December, January, February, it'll get dark at 5, 5.30, late afternoon, early evening. So be prepared for shorter days in the winter months. The daylight savings time actually helps to extend the day. Right. It, still gets dark early but it could be earlier if we weren't on daylight savings time it would be a whole hour earlier 
because that the one anomaly here is that we're on daylight, or at least we observe daylight savings time, but we're in the eastern time zone. So we are in the far western edge of the eastern mm -hmm. time zone. So we get that extreme on the sunrise and also the sunset. So like you said, in the summer, it gets dark very, very late here, very late. But if you're all the way on the east coast, you're an hour or so sooner for your your sunset. You're an hour or so sooner for your sunrise right. in the morning, whether that's summer or winter. But being way out here on the western edge of this eastern time zone is what makes it so extreme. So like you mentioned, daylight savings time in the summer makes it very, very light, very late. Which some people love because you can yeah. do your outdoor activities until, well, literally until you're brushing your teeth before bedtime, yeah, 10 o'clock at night. So like you're laying down with daylight still in the sky as an adult, but as a kid, if you're laying down at 7.30, 8 o'clock, there's still an right. hour and a half of daylight left. Yep. Real daylight. And that's not when the sun goes down and it's still a little bit light out. We're talking real daylight where the sun is still above the horizon. It's it's very, very late, so it's something you can handle. But like you said, it could be a good thing. If you get off work at 5, you want to go play 18 holes or you can do go that. do something outside, a bike ride, you've got a lot of time to do it in the summer. Yep. And some people get all their activities in in the summer because in the winter they know it's not going to be possible. So right. Yeah, that is definitely one thing to be aware of when moving here. So there you have it. There are five things that you need to know and make sure that you can handle before moving to Indianapolis. Of course, there are other things as well. This is just five that we talked about in this video. If you have questions about anything else with moving to Indianapolis, then make sure you reach out any way that you know how. And until the next one, we'll see you later.